Beautiful angel I had slaughtered Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfold And anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're bored into my But what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the glamour And the money that they sold you When the raindrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the things this is revealing? I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me is the bold me. I survived what they sent to the stormy. Resurrected like a biblical story. They thought that it was the old me, but it ain't the old me. It's the bold me. Huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now. Yeah, they're looking anxious now. Yeah, look at their faces now. Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it. I'm talking that family curse. Everyone said I wouldn't make it. Spoiler alert. Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up, when you think about all the language and the bullshit that they sold you, when the teardrops hit your ceiling, will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the pain? Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? irrational what are we actually afraid of especially christians they talk about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money i don't get that at all because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die none of it Stop hearing teardrops on my ceiling Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had slaughtered Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing you wanna get away, you're bored into my head. What are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up, when you think about all the glamour and the money that they sold you, when the raindrops hit your ceiling, will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the things this is revealing? I survived what they sent to destroy me, resurrected like a biblical story. They thought that it was the old me, but it ain't the old me. It's the bold me. I survived what they sent to the stormy. Resurrected like a biblical story. They thought that it was the old me, but it ain't the old me. It's the bold me. Huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now. Yeah, they're looking anxious now. Yeah, look at their faces now. Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it. I'm talking that family curse. Everyone said I wouldn't make it. Spoiler alert. Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up, when you think about all the language and the bullshit that they sold you, when the teardrops hit your ceiling, we you see a human being, we you open your eyes or avoid the pain. Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? So what's holding you back? Fear. It's irrational. What are we actually afraid of? Especially Christians. They talk about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money. I don't get that at all. Because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die. None of it. I 
teardrops on my ceiling Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had slaughtered Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're bored into my what energy are you so feeling? afraid of? They sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now Yeah, they looking anxious now Yeah, look at their faces now Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it I'm talking that family curse Everyone said I wouldn't make it Spoiler alert Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the language And the bullshit that they sold you When the teardrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the pain? Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? talk about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money. I don't get that at all. Because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die. None of it. This morning, when I woke up, couldn't stop hearing teardrops on my ceiling. Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had slaughtered Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're bored into my what energy are you feeling so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the glamour And the money that they sold you When the raindrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the things this is revealing? I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now Yeah, they looking anxious now Yeah, look at their faces now Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it I'm talking that family curse Everyone said I wouldn't make it Spoiler alert Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the language And the bullshit that they sold you When the teardrops hit your ceiling Teardrops on my ceiling 
Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had started Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're born into my what are you feeling? So afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the glamour And the money that they sold you When the raindrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the things this is revealing? I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me is the bold me. I survived what they sent to the stormy. Resurrected like a biblical story. They thought that it was the old me, but it ain't the old me, it's the bold me. Huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now. Yeah, they're looking anxious now. Yeah, look at their faces now. Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it. I'm talking that family curse. Everyone said I wouldn't make it. Spoiler alert. Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the language And the bullshit that they sold you When the teardrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the pain? Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? Irrational. What are we actually afraid of? Especially Christians we talk about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money. I don't get that at all. Because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die. This morning, when I woke up, couldn't stop hearing teardrops on my ceiling. Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had started Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're born into my what are you feeling? So What they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me, it's the bold me huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now Yeah, they looking anxious now Yeah, look at their faces now Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it I'm talking that family curse Everyone said I wouldn't make it Spoiler alert Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the language And the bullshit that they sold you When the teardrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the pain? Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money. I don't get that at all. Because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die. None of it. This morning, when I woke up, couldn't stop hearing teardrops on my ceiling. 
Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had started Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine and the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing You wanna get away, you're bored into my well, what everything What are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the glamour And the money that they sold you When the raindrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the things this is revealing? I survived what they sent to destroy me Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me is the bold me I survived what they sent to the stormy Resurrected like a biblical story They thought that it was the old me But it ain't the old me is the bold me huh. Yeah, I'm looking dangerous now Yeah, they're looking anxious now Yeah, look at they faces now Yeah, how did they make it out? Yeah, I had to break it I'm talking that family curse Everyone said I wouldn't make it Spoiler alert Man, what are you so afraid of? Isn't that what life is made of? When you think about all you gave up When you think about all the language And the bullshit that they sold you When the teardrops hit your ceiling Will you see a human being? Will you open your eyes or avoid the pain? Girl, what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? What are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? And what are you so afraid? So what's holding you back? It's irrational. What are we actually afraid of? Especially Christians. We talk about eternal life and they're worried about losing their stuff and their money. I don't get that at all. Because you don't take any of that stuff with you when you die. None of it. This morning, when I woke up, I couldn't stop hearing Teardrops on my ceiling Falling from the eyes of the beautiful angel I had started Hold me, ignoring what you told me Only for a moment Everything is fine in the beautiful golden path unfolding Anger in response to my emotion All the trauma left unopened Throw it all away and fly inside Get high, good times I'm reeling From the raindrops on the ceiling From your heart this is revealing Hello everyone, can you hear me? James. Hey there, Jason, are you there? I'm here. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to this week's episode of On the Inside with James O'Keefe. Are we live on YouTube and Rumble? Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, welcome, everyone. We apologize for the delay, some technical issues here, but uh, we're going to go and talk about this new story inside the Department of Defense. Jason, mute yourself because there's some static on your end. Uh, uh, inside the Department of Defense, confronting the Pentagon official, the Department of Defense insiders coming forward with new screenshots inside the Department of Defense. We're going to break that down for you actually towards the end of the program. This is usually a two-hour show. Uh, we're going to take you back to the border, talk about our interactions with the Pima County Sheriff's Department. We're going to talk about some FOIA requests. We have Jason on, on about that, and we're going to talk to some whistleblowers and ask for comment first. Uh, we have this new video coming out uh, where I talk to Aiden Gray, the Pentagon official. I, I sat down and watched a Netflix show with him about, about his own comments. It's a very creative kind of thing we did. We're gonna, we're gonna take you through that and talk to some whistleblowers. But first, Jason, Jason, are you there? I'm here, yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, if I'm still staticky, but I'm here. You're very staticky, but you're live, uh, and we're going to sure, talk sure. about this <laughs> talk about this video back in Pima County that we did uh, uh, just two months ago, this interaction with the Sheriff's Department. You, you may remember that we, we went to this Ramada Hotel in San Diego, talked to some sheriffs. Fly on the wall. Here comes another one. I got backup on backup on backup here. Hi. Good. 
James? Yep, I can hear you, Jason. We're just playing the video for the audience here to remind them about that about that incident in uh, in uh, Tucson. What is your name and badge number? My name is Mark. Eight seven nine five. So, anyways, so we spoke to these these sheriff's office. Remember, they were the ones who were standing in front of the bus of illegal immigrants, and they were also talking. There's the video if you're watching on YouTube of them talking to people who run the facility, and we requested that body cam footage. And Jason, walk us through what has happened because you've been filing a FOIA request into Pima County to get the body cam footage of the officers, and you've been seeing some unusual things happen. Jason, can you hear me? Jason? I think we may have lost. Jason, can you hear me? All right, well, we're waiting for Jason. Um, this, was, this is the story. I'm going to set this up for you. Uh, we were even joined by a U.S. congressman at this facility. They went to the facility. Uh, they walked into the facility. You see here, if you're watching on YouTube and Rumble, a bus filled with illegal immigrants passing behind one of these deputies. So, so we filed a FOIA request. Jason filed a FOIA request. And we have these back and forth emails with, and we have these up. I want to show these because they're really entertaining. Uh, this is Keith B. at the Pima County Sheriff uh, saying, your request has not been refused, is being processed. You'll be contacted upon completion. So we have backs and back and forth with this uh, sheriff office to release the body cam footage. So far, no luck. It's been five weeks. We haven't gotten the body cam footage. We've been patiently requesting to inspect these videos. And it's very important that we see these videos because you're going to be able to see the conversations the officers were having sort of in the distance there with these people who run the Ramada Hotel. Now, according to Arizona law, which is modeled after the federal FOIA statute, government agencies must allow the public to inspect any record within a reasonable amount of time. The Sheriff Department staff says they need more than a month to upload the videos because they have to redact personal information. But the body cam footage was shot entirely outdoors. It showed a public figure, elected officials. Nothing in the video should be redacted. Um, and we have some screenshots here going back and forth on this. Uh, I'm going to put it in the queue. This is Jason. Jason, are you there? We're going to wait for Jason to come on to talk to this directly, but we're having technical difficulties. Um, and this is Jason speaking with a man named Adam inside the sheriff's office. You are required by law to allow citizens to inspect records in a reasonable time frame. Two months is not reasonable. I want to give you a heads up that James O'Keefe is going to focus his Wednesday show on your office's refusal to comply with these federal and state transparency laws. We intend to name both you and Desiree on the air, Desiree, Desiree, as you are both public officials. Please be advised the organization has a substantial following. And these are the back and forths that have gone, uh, that have gone between us and the sheriff's office. This is Desiree Romero. It was not advised this was a media request prior, so now is getting forwarded to who processes those. Uh, another email. Um, I'm making one final attempt to obtain public records that contain important information of public concern. We've been waiting for two months. Uh, uh, another email. This is, and, and if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the body cam footage that we're requesting from the Pima, Arizona County Sheriff's Office regarding the interaction the sheriffs had about me with the people who run the facility. And we believe they don't want to give it over because they don't want us to see what those videos show. I've already submitted two requests more than two weeks ago. I have an appointment with the attorney, Arizona Attorney General's office this week to discuss all the difficulties I've had. And, and then you have this email. This is from someone named Chris Nanos, sheriff of Pima County. Um, wow, this is, this is addressed to Jason. Wow, you have, a, have you heard of a teaspoon of sugar? Can go a long way. Um, your request will be dealt with as soon as possible, not any faster or slower, hoping you have a better day. And then Jason responded to Sheriff Nanos, I would like to also officially inspect a copy of your request logs for the last three months, including a list of your current backlog. Jason, can you hear me? 
Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, James. I'm not sure if you can hear me now, but I was having some te technical issues. We can hear you. Um, uh, I'm, I'm showing the screenshots between you back and forth with Chris. Is it Nanos or Nanos? So, so Chris Nanos is the sheriff of Pima, Pima County, and he, they have had their offices had our request for about five weeks now. We uh, asked for a very, very simple uh, public records inspection of some body cam footage. Like you said, it was it was uh, shot in public outdoors. There, there doesn't need to be any redactions. In fact, there can't be any redactions made to it. And the sheriff's department has been dragging its feet. Now they say they're understaffed that they get about 1500 requests a month. Now I asked to see their request logs so that we could verify that they're getting 1500 requests per month because that seems awfully high. If it is correct and they, they aren't able to release footage in a timely manner, I think that's news as well. So they're either trying to hide something from us, there's something on the footage that they don't want us to see, or they're so sure, backlogged sure, sure. that they're unable to fulfill their requirements under federal FOIA laws. Well, well Jason, what do you think they're afraid of? Is it these conversations that the sheriffs have had with these Ramada hotel staff? Right. You know, they, they showed up and they, they gave the OMG staff a hard time. Then a few days later, when uh, Congressman Tim, uh, Tom Tiffany showed up, they, sh they came again and gave him a hard time. And these so, two officers, this is, this is this guy that had kind of an attitude. Um, officers Diaz Menendez and Sean Maurer. Right. Uh, you know, he kind of said, so guys, what are you guys doing here? He seemed like he had an attitude. I don't know if he was, this is a question, maybe you have a perspective. His officer, Sean Marr, and we'll play this clip once more. What's going on here? I can tell by your tone, you're probably not a fan of the first night. Oh, I think there's, um, the feds are giving money. Were they just sort of following orders and doing their job, or were they just not fans of mine, from your view? Well, it, it, that's a good question, which is why we want to see their footage. We have a legal right to see any kind of body cam footage shot on an official call, which they were on. So this is this is Deputy Deputy uh, Carter. Uh, let's listen to this clip. This is the, the the body cam footage we've requested. Will show the private conversations that these deputies have had with various illegal immigration hotel personnel. And uh, there's really a bus right behind the sheriff, and he's like, I don't know. There's a bus filled with illegal immigrants coming to a hotel. If you guys were to come back onto the property yeah. after we've instructed you guys to get yeah. there, formally trespass. It would be a criminal offense. Are you okay. just following orders? Yep. There's a bus filled with illegal immigrants driving right behind him. Sheriff acting like he doesn't know what's going on. I asked him if he's just following orders. Probably Are you following orders? You would have to arrest you guys, all right? Historically, so, that doesn't I'm work so well. You guys don't do that for the night, all right? What is your name and badge number? My name is Debbie Carter. Badge number is 908. So, like Jason, we can only imagine the footage that's on there. Maybe the right. deputy is cursing me off and, you know, saying things he's not he's not proud of. Uh, uh, Jason, stand by. Nick Shirley is joined. Nick, can you hear me? Nick, can you hear me? That's the thing about live radio, ladies and gentlemen. It's very technically difficult, but it's certainly free, and we love it. Uh, Nick, unmute yourself. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Nick. So I just wanted to take us back to this moment in Tucson. You were there, and we've requested the body cam footage off these deputies and, and we're getting told to pound sand here. Um, what do you think is on this body cam footage? You Weren't you like in the compound or weren't you being cursed off by these hotel workers? Yeah, I was in the compound. And so um, I think why the reason why they're not getting that footage is because before they came and talked to us, they were talking to the workers at the hotel. And what do you, 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 you watch these, these sheriff's deputies talk to the workers? Um, I personally did not. I saw the bus come in, and then I ran off to not get taken by the police. But then when we came back, um, they were talking with the hotel workers. So, so they were talking to the hotel workers, and what type of things, I mean, we can only speculate what type of things they were saying, but they're probably not proud of those back-and-forth conversations, are they? Yeah, they're definitely hiding something there, because, I mean, we're not, we weren't breaking the law. We were walking on public property and they were trying to accuse us of trespassing 
for standing outside the building. Jason, you've sent a letter to Keith A. B., Public Information Officer, Pima County Sheriff's Department. Uh, talk about this letter for a minute. I have it, I have it shown on the screen here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and post this on X in our thread. But tell us more about why this is significant. I know this is kind of in the weeds, but we're journalists. We're trying to teach citizen journalists the importance of FOIA law. Uh, just talk about this letter you sent on Monday. So it is a little bit in the weeds, but the important thing is that the Freedom of Information Act, which is a federal law, is the really the primary component that journalists have to hold elected officials and public officials accountable. And we have a right to see how they're doing their jobs. When they show up to a call, it's important that we can see how they're conducting themselves. We're speculating that they may have said something on the video. What I suspect or what I, I want to check on is that they didn't commit any crimes. All so right. What, what we're hearing from the sheriff is that we need to wait five to six weeks to determine whether or not any wrongdoing occurred. C uh, uh, commit, uh, when you say wrongdoing occurred, are you talking about their wrongdoing or our wrongdoing? Well, we know that we didn't do anything wrong or we would have been charged promptly for it. What I'm suggesting is that the sheriff's department may have done things wrong. Also, we have the right to know what was reported about our organization. We also have a right to know what was reported about that congressman. So well, we have this uh, letter queued up here, um, and they also called the police on the congressman. Congressman Tiffany showed up to this facility, which, by the way, everyone has, has since this facility has lost its funding, and uh, the exposure that this has gotten. But um, you have the letter there. We're going to follow up with the Arizona Attorney General's office and sue them if we need to to get access to this body cam footage. That's uh, correct. So the bottom line is we are not going to give up. We have a right to see what's on this footage, and we have a right to show it to, our, to the public. And we're not going to stop until we get that. We also would like to compel them to start complying with the law. Arizona state law says very clearly that you have to have a mechanism on your website to submit Freedom of Information Act requests or just public records requests. They don't currently have that on their website, so they're not complying in that way either. Well, the so our goal is to not only get this footage, but to make sure that people in Pima County have access to public records when they need them. Not five weeks later or six weeks later, but in a reasonable amount of time. Well, so um... Let's let Jason, sorry to interrupt you. Um, let's go ahead and give Nick, are you there? Yes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and call these people for comment live. This is live radio. We're going to call Chris Nano, Sheriff of Pima County. We've got all the cell phone numbers, which I won't post on X, even though we may like to, but that's a violation of privacy. But I have the number on my end and I'm going to go ahead and call Sheriff. He probably won't pick up the phone. Uh, I'll, pro I'll probably talk while the phone is ringing so that you just don't hear constant rings. But this is Sheriff Chris Nanos, Pima County. Um, we're going to call him for comment about his little email. The email where he gets loses his cool, Jason. He That's says, right. wow, Jason, have you heard of a teaspoon of sugar? Can go a long way. T what does he mean by teaspoon of sugar, Jason? He means He means that... That he okay, this is a. This is like a switchboard. There's a cell phone. Should I call the cell phone? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He has it listed publicly, so we should call it. All right, here we go. Please leave a message at the tone. When finished, you may hang up or press pound for additional options. Hey, Chris Nanos, Sheriff of Pima County. This is James O'Keefe with O'Keefe Media Group. And I'm just following up on our FOIA request into the body cam footage and following up on our request to inspect your logs for the last three months, including your backlog that makes the compliance with our FOIA requests so difficult for your office. I'll also try you on your cell phone. You can email me at james at o'keefemediagroup.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And I also wanted to ask you what you meant by the teaspoon of sugar comment in the email to uh, Jason Watkins. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and call the cell phone. Here we go. Um, this is the cell phone of, if you're just tuning in, uh, I am 
reaching out to Pima County Sheriff's Office for comment about the fact they won't comply with our Freedom of Information request into body cam footage, talking with the Sheriff's Department, talking to the people who run the illegal immigrant facility at the Ramada Hotel in Tucson, Arizona. Here we go. All right. Let's, let's double call. Chris Nano, Sheriff of Pima County. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. Let's call again. Sometimes I'll text and call, double call, text. Getting comment from the Sheriff's Office. And then there's one more, one more number to call. This is Deputy Keith, right Jason? Your call right. has been forwarded to voicemail. All right, let's call Deputy Keith. Now tell me about De Deputy Keith A.B., convicted felon. Well, uh, he is the public information officer for Pima County, and because his information wasn't listed on their website as mandated by law, I had to search for him. I had to do a Google search for him. And what I found was pretty alarming. He's actually served jail time for uh, tax fraud. Okay, let's give him a call. Here we go. Hey, is this Keith? Yes. Hey, Keith. Hey, Keith. Uh, this is Keith B., right? Uh, the uh, public information officer. Hey. Yes, I'm one of the public information officers. Hey, Keith. Nice to nice to talk to you. My name is James O'Keefe. And How are you doing today? Good. You work with the Pima County Sheriff's Department, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's right. So I'm James O'Keefe, and we, we've we been waiting almost two months on that FOIA request for the video off of your uh, officer's uh, body cameras from the uh, facility, the Illegal Immigrant uh, Ramada Hotel. We're wondering, what's the holdup? So I believe that, uh, I don't know if it's someone you work with close to beers, but they had emailed about it um, the other day, and uh, it is actually, I mean, it's being processed by our records. So as far as PIOs are concerned, we only track those requests. We don't actually have anything to do with processing those. Mm -hmm. So every time that you guys have asked, we've reached out to our records. And they are still working on them, but I think the uh, sheriff responded to him in an email, kind of describing to him the process, how it is done in a first come, first serve basis. And there's, I think, about fifteen hundred every month that they have to fill. So, we we we'd requested to see the backlogs, um, inspect a copy of the request logs for the last uh, three months, including a list of the current backlog, because we just find it unusual to uh, that that this is taking so long. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by a backlog. Is that something you sent a request for? Or? Yes. Yeah, we, we officially inspect, uh, we'd like to officially inspect a copy of re request logs for the last three months, including a list of your current backlog. Um, we spoke to Chris Nanos from the Sheriff of Pima County, and he kind of made a, a weird comment to us about how we need to use a teaspoon of sugar in this process. We take this very seriously. The police threatened to arrest me for showing up and do doing my job as a journalist. So I take the threat of arrest uh, very seriously. This is very serious business. So we've been waiting two months for this body cam footage, and and we're going to go to the attorney general unless we get it. Okay. Well, and from what I had seen, it looks like the request was put in. I don't think it's been two months, um, but I understand that you're concerned that it's taking that. How long do you think it's taken? How long? How long would you characterize it as? I'm listen. So I'll. If you have that request you want to put in, as far as you said you're wanting to look at backlogs, I'm not sure what that consists of, but if you want to send that over to that same PCSD PIO email, then I can send that up uh, over to our records and see if that's something they can provide. Do you have a timeline on when we can get a copy of these records, uh, body cam footage, please? I can't give you a timeline, anything other than what records has given you. Like I said, I just help track them as a PIO. I don't actually produce any of those records. so. Uh, like the sheriff detailed in that email, they're done as they are received. And so once they get to the point that yours was received in that queue, that's when that would be responded to. Well, it says the law says a reasonable time frame, and you you took issue with my characterization of that time frame being two months. The incident happened in late January. It is now late March. 
Do, does that sound like two months to you? I'm just, uh, I understand that you're trying to figure out like what exactly the timeline is. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm not going to... Uh, I'm just trying to do my sense. job as a journalist, Mr. Pima County Public Information Officer, and the law says reasonable time frame, and it just doesn't seem reasonable to me. Uh, I understand that you're a cog in a machine and there's lots of moving parts, but... The Pima County Sheriff's Office threatened to arrest journalists, and we're trying to get access to this information because the public has a right to know it. And prompt, um, I'm quoting Arizona statute, means quick to act or do what is required. And quote, does spoken at once without delay. That's from West Valley View Incorporated versus Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, 2007. So the law says reasonable. And uh, requesting a handful of digital files is not a burdensome request. And since the footage shows an interaction in public, that's on a public egress, in a public street involving public figures, no redaction should be necessary. So we would like to know a time frame. I think the world would like to know, the American people demand to know, a time frame when we are going to get a copy of these records, sir. Sure, I understand your question. Like I said, I'm not the one who produces those records. Who, so who is the one that produces those records? Who is the one? That is our records division. They're the ones who actually produce those records. So J I'd as much as I'd love to be able to give you, hey, you have them by this date, that's not something I can provide. And I think the reasons for that have been detailed in the multiple email exchanges that have already happened. Uh, Jason, my colleague, so yeah, is on the... Jason, who request made the request. Jason, you're. Uh, would you mind uh, talking to... Uh, Keith, for a moment. Yeah, Mr. B, thank you so much for, for taking our call. My question is this. What if there's really important information on this footage? You guys are sitting on footage of a U.S. congressman visiting your neighborhood, and you won't release that footage to the media. What if there's something important on that footage? Are you saying we have to wait two months to reveal that information? What if it's too late? Well, Mr. Watkins, like like I had explained just a moment ago, um, I, as the PIO, just help track these requests. I'm not actually producing these records to you guys, so that's why I've done my best to help pass along that information that I get from records as to how their process works and how long it takes to get to you guys. But again, this has been multiple, multiply, or outlined multiple times, that uh, process, there's many, many requests that they get, and they respond to them in the order that they're received. Therefore, I can't give you a timeline because I don't know how backed up they are. I don't know how long that takes. So, I mean, the law says it has to be a reasonable time frame. Uh, so you you got one guy's pointing me to the other guy. You're pointing me to... Um, Deputy, v, Deputy V, the Arizona state law is also very clear that you have to be able to make contact with someone on your website for public records. And on the Pima County Sheriff's Department website, there is no mechanism for that. You're encouraging people to file a request in person, but the state law says that if you run a website, you have to include that component on the website, and it's not currently there. As a result, I had to Google you. I had to search for you on Google because your name doesn't show up on the Pima County Sheriff's Department website. Do you guys intend to change that? Are you going to comply with the law and put some kind of notice on the website so that people can submit these requests directly to you. The law says your name needs to be listed on the website. It's not. All right, so I'm gonna have you talk with my supervisor. He might be able to answer a few of these questions better for you guys, all Is right? your supervisor available right now? He's right here. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Sergeant Houston. Sergeant, who am I speaking with? Sergeant Houston. Sergeant. Like, uh, sergeant H -O -U. Houston, you're you're a sergeant with the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Yes, I am. Hi, I'm James O'Keefe uh, with O'Keefe Media Group. Um, I don't know how much of that conversation you just heard about our FOIA request into the body cam footage outside the Ramada Hotel. I, uh, I got. I got the uh, the tail end of that that conversation, and I, uh, I had seen uh, a couple of the emails that were uh, going on reference this. All right. Well, we, we'd like we'd like your urgent response to this uh, inquiry because we've waited almost two months for the footage via FOIA request, and we'd like to know when we're going to get a copy of the videos. Uh, we've also understand that redactions are not necessary as these are public figures on public streets. So I just wanted to get that update from you, sir. Okay. 
What was the last email uh, correspondence that you had references from our, our department specifically? Jason? I got a pretty terse and unserious email from Sheriff Chris Nanos uh, implying that I needed to use, quote, a spoonful of sugar. Uh, these videos are public records, and if he's implying that I'm being impatient, I submitted my request weeks and weeks ago. I followed the process on your website, which, by the way, is not in line with Arizona state law. I had to file a request for a police report instead of just a public records request. Arizona revised statutes makes it very clear that you have to have some kind of a, a link on your website or some kind of component for filing uh, basically FOIA requests. And your website doesn't have that. So that was that delayed by about a week or two. Um, we were told that you guys don't have the staff to release this footage. Uh, you guys had plenty of staff when we showed up at the Ramada and when the congressman showed up, you guys had plenty of staff to respond to that. So our concern is that people in Pima County are not getting access to public records they're entitled to because you're, you're claiming that you don't have the staff to release them. Is that accurate? Uh, I, I didn't work in the records department. I don't want to speak on what their staffing staffing is. If, if they told you that they don't have the staffing, I'm, I'm not in a position to say otherwise. Um, but I I would like to know the, the statute that you were referring to um, uh, about the website. Do you have that handy by chance? I do. Uh, it's a letter that we sent. It's a letter that we sent to... Uh, to your office, Keith A. B. Arizona Re Revised Statute 39-171, public records request and point of contact. I'm quoting now, this information shall be made available to the public on the website maintained by the entity. You guys don't okay. currently have that on the, on the Pima Cal County Sheriff's Department website. Oh. Okay, I uh, the, the website does fall under my purview, um, so I, I I appreciate you bringing this to my attention, and I'll uh, uh, speak with our legal advisor and, and uh, have him verify the, the website and, and see if, if it needs fixing, like you're saying, or, or if it is adequate for the statute itself. Um, uh, my main concern, now, at Urgent Houston, okay, I'm sorry. Let, me, let me just say, my main concern is that there could be information on these videos that is really important. And... A United States congressman came to your, uh, not from your state, from another state, came to your community right. and was confronted by your staff. And now we have to wait five, six weeks to get footage of that. And surely you recognize that that's not acceptable. I hear your your complaint. I can understand your frustration and, and, and the time that you, you put into this and the information that you're... Um, Seeking, I I recognize that, um, and I know that our records unit supervisor has been in contact with you about the, the process that we're doing this. Um, you know, and I'm I'm sure you are keeping record and documenting each contact that you have with us, and that would be my suggestion to you. I know that there was uh, um, uh, some instruction as far as when we are going to be able to answer that, but it doesn't have a specific time. And I don't have a, a date that I can give you um, that it will be uh, completed. Uh, I know that you've said, you know, with your uh, citing of the, the laws uh, about the reasonableness, um, and, and that's something where your record tracking um, and, and documentation of how many times you contact us, what you've been told each time, uh, would come into play. But... Um, I don't, I'm not going to be able to expedite the, the request um, that's handled by our, our records uh, department. Um, sir, so, um, sir you're, you're the sergeant for the public information office in the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so you handle all, like, media inquiries. Is that correct? Uh, the media inquiries that come through our department, yes. Um, if, if it's a FOIA request, that's not handled by the public information office. Okay, well, I'm a journalist, and this is a media inquiry. I understand because every office points me to the other office and says I'm not responsible. It's, it's very Kafka-esque. It's just bureaucratic. 
And the bottom line is I'm a journalist and they call and they, they threatened to arrest me for standing in a public street. So you can imagine the newsworthiness of this. And I guess the question is, the American people want to see the footage. It's been two months. Yeah. Um, I mean, are, are we going to see it this year, ne next year? Um, the law says a reasonable time. Usually these FOIA requests, I get footage of it in 10 days. And I guess the question I'd like to know, and I don't, I don't know why this, this would be a secret, unless there's something right. really damaging you're trying to protect. I'm not sure what exactly you need to redact. Your officers were talking to officials outside the, the building. So I'm not aware of what redaction, why can't you just send the files to us so we can see them? James, can I? Uh, uh, not, not yet, Jason, I'd like the Sergeant Houston to answer my question. Why can't we see those video files? They're police officers standing outside talking to public officials. What, is, what, what possible reason could there be not to just send us the files, like tomorrow? Yeah, I don't. I don't think the content is what is is holding up. I think the amount of, of requests that we have is is from reading the emails. That's what it appears uh, to be the the reason for the the length of time that it's been already. I I'm not aware of anything that's on you know this incident that is is secretive. But again, I'm not involved in this specific incident. When you see you're not involved in the incident, you're the leader. You're the guy who's in charge. So whether you're involved or not, it's your responsibility, is it not, to address media inquiries. I mean, everyone's telling me they're not the guy that does the thing. The bottom line is we have a right under the law to see this footage, and I'll sue, and I'll go to the Attorney General of Arizona if I must to get this footage. But we believe there's information on there the public needs to see. We have a right to see it under right. the law. Hey, I, uh, I, com I completely agree w with, you know, it, it being your right and, and the law says what the law says. And um, if, if you want to go to the uh, attorney general, um, that's where your documentation on all the time that you've contacted us, your timeline of when you made the contact. Uh, and then uh, uh, somebody else would be the one that would determine if it's reasonable. By me saying I'm not directly involved in this, I, I wasn't out uh, at, at the hotel that night. So I, I don't know what's on the... The tape. I don't know what's on the body cam footage. I don't know any of that. That's what when I said I'm not directly involved with it. That's what I'm talking about. Now you're talking about a media inquiry that is a FOIA request, and you're asking for uh, body cam footage. That's the part where I'm saying also that does not fall within the um, public information officer's realm. We we have already given that information to the records unit, and the FOIA request has been submitted and a FOIA request is being worked on for you for the footage that you said. So I can't tell you, hey, it's going to be this year. I can't tell you it's going to be next year. I can't tell you it's going to be tomorrow because I don't have that information. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't know that anybody has that specific information for you. I know it's being worked on um, uh, or it's in the process and they may be processing uh, several other requests that they have before that. And I don't know, so I don't want to speculate again because I'm not in charge of the records section. I see. So I, I'm not, you know, me as the supervisor of our public information officers, and I know you've spoken with uh, uh, Deputy B and, and Deputy Schoonover, um, I can tell you that we are not hiding anything. We're not trying to prevent any release of any. Well, I mean, in the time that it's taken you to have this phone call with me, with all due respect, sir, you could have facilitated the transfer of files. You, I mean, it's it's not that difficult. You just send us the files, and and I think this is a pretty uh, obviously of all the requests you've gotten, this is obviously the most sensitive. I'm not aware of any other requests that are as sensitive as this one, involving this facility, the Ramada Hotel, Congressman Tiffany, James O'Keefe, threatened to arrest James O'Keefe, threatened to arrest. Obviously, you've seen the video, sir. I wasn't born yesterday. So I know you know what I'm talking about. And I just feel like let's cut the BS, let's cut the bureaucracy. I don't want to leave it at that and allow you to, uh, you know, misrepresent what I was talking about. Please tell me how I've misrepresented you in any way. Please tell me how I've misrepresented you. I don't want to misrepresent you. I'm stating the truth. So go ahead. I'll be able to. I said 
I don't know what's on the body cam footage. So am I aware of the incident? Yes. But I am not watching the body cam footage. You're not watching the body no. cam footage. Well, that's what you want released. And nobody is watching the body cam footage. We have a right to see the body cam footage. And I'm just trying to cut through the, the, the bureaucracy and get to the, the truth. You know and I know what we're talking about here. Sir, have you seen the video released on YouTube with a million views of the, of the sheriff's office uh, uh, saying they need to arrest me as the bus of illegal immigrants comes behind me? Have you seen that video? I have seen the video that's posted on the internet. Yeah, yes. It's the video that we are talking about is the body cam video. That's the video that I haven't seen. I'm talking about the video posted on the internet, yes. Now we are talking about that. But when I said I hadn't seen it, you told me that I had seen it and were referring to the body cam video that I told you I didn't see. And that's what I said. You're misrepresenting me and I didn't want that to happen. So I don't want there to be any it's, uh, communication on this, what we're talking about. I am aware of your is, incident. I'm aware of where you were and all of that. I understand that. And I know that that's what we're talking about. I know that you submitted a FOIA request for the body cam footage from the deputies that were on scene. That's what you're waiting for. And that's what I'm telling you. I don't have the control over when that will get released. That's for the records department. And I know they've explained that. And I don't think anybody else in any of the other emails have pointed you or Jason in another direction back to the PIOs. Well, sir, so, you having seen the internet footage, thanks for the clarification, the YouTube footage produced about the incident, you can clearly see the sheriff's office talking to the Ramada hotel workers, which yelled at my colleague Nick Shirley, cursed him off, so we only know what's on that footage. People have right to see that footage. Jason, you're about to say something. Yeah, I, I you know, know. Go ahead, Sir, uh, Sergeant Houston. I, I don't want there to be, I, I don't want it to sound like, I don't want you guys to get the footage. I, I, I am not in any way standing in the way of, of any body cam footage being released to you from that incident or any other incident, really. Okay. So, I, 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 we, I believe you. The problem is federal law and state law is very, very clear that the public has a right to inspect these records. And yeah. five weeks or six weeks is not a reasonable amount of time to force people to wait for public records. That's no one would agree that. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, when you say clear, you know, reasonable, it, 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 there's several factors that go into that. You, you, from those emails, it shows that you guys are not the only ones that have submitted a, a request, um, you know, maybe only on this case, but there's other requests that have been, that have come in. So the reasonableness does change and it is on a case by case kind of basis because there's a totality of circumstances that goes into it. And I, I don't know all of them reference this specific case, but I understand the frustration. I don't want to continue to go in circles. I understand that uh, you guys have waited. So, so Sar Sergeant, Sergeant Houston, Pima County Sheriff's Office, who waited two months for the body cam footage. Um, what's our next step? How do we get the footage other than suing your office and, and taking you to court? What, what do you recommend that I do because your office threatened to arrest news journalists outside the Ramada Hotel with illegal immigrants? We know there's stuff on the footage. We believe there's stuff on the body cam footage that your, your all office doesn't want the public to see. So how do we proceed? What's the way to solve this? I think the, the waiting for the footage, and I know that that's not the answer you want to hear. Um, and, you know, if you want to, to seek, you know, legal recourse and, and go through the attorney general, uh, I wouldn't discourage you from, from doing that now um, and, and doing both starting that process and, and, and just waiting for your FOIA request to be processed. Um, that's what well within your right. And spoken to several department members, you have several correspondence from department members, and that would be my suggestion to you is to, if, if you feel that that's, well, sir, that's what you need to do, why would you, to get up. Why would you I'm encourage sorry? us, why, Sergeant Houston, why would you encourage us to incur legal fees against your office? That's what will result if we file suit. You're going to have to pay our legal fees, which will be substantial. Yeah. So I don't when I said I encourage, when I said I would not discourage 
you from doing that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you do not file legal. Uh, you would not or, or, discourage or, us from doing from filing. <sighs> you would. I'm, I'm not playing a word game. I, well, I, 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 I think that's ex uh, sir. With all due respect, I think it's exactly what you're doing. I mean, no, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, sir. Let, let me, let me, let me be real with you. I, I am a journalist, and they threatened to arrest me outside the Ramada Hotel for doing my job. Okay. Back in circles. So I'm going to tell you again. I, the, you asked me what the next step would be. It's to wait. You said the other uh, option that you would have is to sue us. I'm saying, do what you feel is necessary. I'm telling you, you need to wait, just like everybody the, the American the people, people, sir, are You're sick and tired of the artifice that pervades no, politics. They're tired. They're they're you need to do that. they're tired of the Orwellian artifice and wordsmithing. You and I, I know what's really going on here. I, I know. By the way, I'm a hidden camera journalist, so I tend to reveal things. What's really going on is there's something on the footage that you, not you personally, sir. But your office doesn't want the public to see. That's what's actually going on here. You know it, and I know it, and everybody knows it. So, so that's the also, that's the truth. Okay. Uh, also, I will say for the record, I know that the local media doesn't wait five weeks to get footage when there's a shooting, or when there's a, a, a bank robbery. Local media tends to get access to footage right away. So, well, we do that that's true. Uh, sir, I, I got a journalism degree from University of Arizona in 2003. So, okay, when was the last time that you got uh, uh, footage from the, the sheriff's department? That, that, that time frame. I have submitted so many FOIA requests in my life, I can't keep track of all of them. And I can tell you that I have never waited five weeks for a public record. So clearly okay. there's something wrong in the Pima she County Sheriff's Department and it's affecting all citizens of Pima County and it needs to be rectified. And us speaking with you and, and hearing you say there's nothing you can do, all journalists have to wait month, weeks or months. That's a problem and that's newsworthy. And if we sue your office, sir, you guys are gonna, the taxpayers are gonna pick up the tab and we think that's wrong. So we would that's respectfully right. request I, we have made, I don't want to go in circles. I appreciate your time. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, I appreciate you, 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 you know, being professional. I've told you the truth and I will follow up with you offline, sir. Thank you very much for your okay. time. And we'll be emailing you shortly. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are currently live on the inside with James O'Keefe. I apologize. That went so long. You heard from the head sheriff, in the Pima County Sheriff's Sergeant, excuse me, Head Sergeant in the Pima County Sheriff's Department Public Information Officer, they are not willing to release the body cam footage from the video outside of the Ramada Hotel from February when they threatened to arrest us and we're talking to the people there in the distance. You can see them there talking to the officials at, that run the hotel. Now, we, we went into the weeds on this one. We wanna teach you guys about your rights uh, because I want all citizen journalists to request footage. Jason Watkins, uh, a lecturer at the Cronkite School of Journalism, your reaction to that conversation with the sergeant. Jason, are you there? I guess Jason, we lost Jason. Uh, we'll get Jason back on. Jason, can you hear me? Well, we don't have... Jason here, but we will have him in a minute. It may be a good time to educate all of you on why freedom of information requests are important. Those police officers you saw in the video, they all carry around body cameras. They all have those cameras on their chest. That's public footage. See that? See those cameras there with the little red lights? That's public footage. You have a right to see that. There are laws you don't even know your rights, but all of you can request the FOIA requests. Anyone can do this. You don't have to be a quote unquote credentialed journalist. And this flippant response, have you heard of a teaspoon of sugar can go a long way? Says Chris Ninos. We'll be, we'll be asking him about that. Um,
And when Jason comes on, I'll get his comment. I want to get to pretty soon, we've got breaking information inside the Pentagon, the United States Department of Defense. And we're going to show you the breaking story out of Washington, D.C. with Aiden Gray, where we have video of Aiden Gray. That's his fake name. And we have more insiders. We, this is the guy that I did last week. Now, when I'm going to sit down with him, I'm going to take you to that video. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to talk to you about our friends at the wellness company. Not a week goes by without a news headline about potential medical supply shortages threatening our infrastructure and our power grid. And you remember when what they pulled during the pandemic, certain medications were mysteriously out of stock. No way will I ever let that happen again. In today's unpredictable world, it's all about being prepared for who knows what they have in store for the next pandemic. I actually think there's going to be some, um, for the election, people ask me, is it Biden versus Trump? I, I usually don't opine on things of this nature. But I've told people it will be Biden versus Trump, but there is going to be some type of black swan event. I can almost guarantee you there's going to be some unforeseen black swan event between now and November that will change the game. Uh, and we don't know what that's going to be. But that's my prediction for the election. There's going to be some unforeseen event like a pandemic. It may not be the pandemic. Our friends and supporters at The Wellness Company have designed this unique prescription-based medical emergency kit that is packed with eight potentially life-saving prescription-only medications, including z pack and Ivermectin, which I, my team, actually uses this when I'm out in the field, when I'm out in the desert, on the border, um, and on the road, and starting to feel a bit under the weather. Health is everything. We don't take days off. And this is a great opportunity to order a wellness company emergency medical kit. The wellness company medical kit stands ready to treat over 30 common ailments, ensuring you have access to vital medications when you need the most. And now you can save $45 per kit when you order using the code OMG. Get ready to write this down. Get your wellness company emergency kit at twc.health slash OMG. That's twchealth slash OMG. Again, twchealth slash OMG and you save $45 today when you use code OMG. Speaking of OMG, oh my goodness, this, this conversation we just had with the sheriff or the sergeant, I, I gotta give the guy credit. Jason, are you there? Jason Watkins? I'm here. Can you he hear did, me now? He did talk, I, I, we can hear you. He did talk to us about the body cam footage. Jason, your reaction to his, to, to that you know, incredible still call. exactly where we we started we still don't have the footage and now it's going on about six weeks since we made our initial request so it's pretty typical using the exclusive redaction which is how they're able to sit on this they're they're able to put it into a queue and make us wait for weeks and weeks it's a, a, a it, it has a chilling effect on media requests and it's an intentional sort of uh act that they do to to deny footage uh, if you were to request any kind of, of paper records, they don't redact footage there. It's our responsibility as, as the media to redact that footage. So for them to use that as an excuse to hold body cam footage from us, I think is pretty alarming. Well, Jason, thank you for what you're doing. We'll be in touch. I appreciate it. You're welcome to stay on. We're going to go to our breaking Pentagon story. Uh, here we go. We're going to Washington. Yeah, we tear down the wall. Jason Beck, Associate Director, Total Force Recording. I think we're going to get that footage in their team of the actual new video uh, here. Uh, this is the new video featuring, featuring the Netflix, I shouldn't say Netflix, the Pentagon official. Uh, uh, this is pretty creative. We actually went undercover, met with him. Uh, looks like this video here is the actual original video, but we have a breaking new video. Oh, this is it right here. All right, now this is pretty cool, guys. We're gonna go through this. When I was with this guy, Jason Beck, I wanna show you something. towards the end of my meeting last week, this is, this is now live on X, I told him I wanna show you something, the show that premieres on Netflix about someone inside the Department of Defense. On the show that premieres in a minute, so yeah, I look for a show um, for, us to, for us to watch here. So you've seen Black Mirror, 
Have you ever seen um, Jane is Awful? No. You've heard of this guy, um, what's his name? James O'Keefe? Or James O'Keefe? Yeah, I think so. You've heard of that? I actually found an episode that was based upon something he did in actually the Department of Defense. Really? Yeah. Check this out. So then I proceed to show <laughs> to Aiden Gray, who I guess that's his LGBT name. We've learned, we'll get to that in a moment. I showed him this, like if you've seen Black Mirror with, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Jane is Awful is the name of the show. It's a show about, about a character who watches herself on Netflix because the Netflix producers listen to her life through the phone. And you sign away in the terms of services, Netflix ability. This is a fictional Netflix, not the real Netflix. In a science fiction universe, they can they can artificial intelligence. So I modeled it after that Jane is awful show in real life here with the Pentagon official. After we expose Jason, and this is an incredible thing. We're going to get to it in a minute. But before we get to the rest of that, uh, we do have Tim. Tim, our insider. Uh, I think it's Timothy McKinley. There in Tucson, you actually saw the interaction with the Pima County Sheriff's officers, right? I did. I was right across the street. The parking lot for us is right there. And did you happen to hear any of that live phone call I just had with the sergeant's office a minute ago? I did. And and what is your reaction to both that and what you saw that day outside the Ramada compound? Well, so um, I have uh, an, an insider of, of sorts in the Pima County Sheriff's Department, and I think the general view is that they don't like you guys. They call you uh, First Amendment auditors. They call me what? A First uh, uh, First Amendment auditor. That's what they call you. A First Amendment auditor. Well, that sounds like a good thing, right? I would say so. That sounds like, a, I don't know why that's a, that's a pejorative. Um, it's, uh, it, it was expressed in a disparaging way. So it's, uh, for whatever reason, they, they don't, the sheriff's department does not like you guys. Well, so your source is telling we're, we're speaking to someone who has someone inside the, the, the Pima County Sheriff's Office. You're telling us that they don't like us. Um, anything else you can tell us about why they, they don't like us? I, I, I think from what I've observed that uh, they just seem to be in cahoots with whoever was running that facility, an NGO or whatever, um, because it was always, anytime they showed up, it was pretty much dismissive. Hey, you know, everyone get out of here. This is a protected place. You can't be here. So, sheriff, sheriff, sheriff. Uh, so the scene of these guys coming up to me, there was a question. This is, this is officer Sean Marr when he was kind of waltzing up to me, passive aggressively giving me an attitude. That's because he actually doesn't like me. Not because he, not because he's, uh, uh, following orders. I, I don't I don't have too much more information that I that I know on that other than it's a, a general uh, indifference towards towards media over there. Everything is is, uh, is was hush hush. I mean, after you guys visited, things drastically changed. Well, uh, I appreciate the little information that you do have. Thank you for joining and giving us that insight. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Um, Small note. Yeah. After you guys visited, they're in the process of converting it back into a hotel. So you, you made quite an impact. Well, we, we apparently, uh, you're hearing that live, ladies and gentlemen, that the uh, OMG videos have led to the compound that was previously housing illegal immigrants go right back to being a hotel. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay, back to the Pentagon. Let's go to the full reveal. We've got some Pentagon whistleblowers on standby. I've been trying to figure out this technology. I'm gonna have to call the guy via signal because we're a little afraid that the voice reveal feature will glitch and we don't wanna give up the source. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna take you through the rest of this video. Here we go. 
This is this is this is really entertaining stuff. This is this is we've never done anything like this. Uh, Voice Transformer does not work on Android. Uh, just so you all know, on Spaces, you have to have an iPhone with your voice disguised. This is me and Aiden Gray, Associate Director, Total Force Requirements and Sourcing Policy Office of the Secretary of Defense, about to watch himself on video. Let's see what happens. That's based upon like what he does, and I thought you'd find it very interesting given who you are. So I just want to show a few minutes of it and get your thoughts. And it's based upon this guy, James O'Keefe. Yeah. And I think your organization was Project Veritas. Oh, Project Veritas. Yeah. yeah I, I intentionally mispronounced that. <laughs> intentionally mispronounced that. And he corrected me. The man with the security clearance corrects me and, and, and tells me what it, the way it is. That is... Really unbelievable. I thought it was. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah. 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 He's just a terrible person. <laughs> He's a terrible person. He's horrible. Yeah. He like sets people up and they like confess all these things that they're doing and stuff like that. I think he founded a new organization that's called like O'Keefe Media or something like that. I actually found an episode that was based upon something he did in actually the Department of Defense. Really? Yeah. His face when he says really. I don't know if he I don't know if he fully gets it yet. I'm not sure if he knows what's about to happen. I actually happen. found an episode that was based upon something he did in actually the Department of Defense. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's like they, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see that. Check this out. And then there he is, inside the Pentagon. Inside the Pentagon. And look at his face, look at his face. He begins to realize at this moment that he has been caught on camera in this, this is the third meeting, we're sitting on the couch. You're in the episode. And then he turns to the left, he, just, he turns his face because the cameraman comes out at this point in time. And you're caught on tape as part of this undercut investigation and the person that recorded you is actually... And then I reveal myself by taking off my glasses. James O'Keefe. Gotcha. Gotcha, he says. Now, usually I'm the one who says gotcha, but he says gotcha, like, I got you. He meant to say, I get you. He realizes what's happening here. For those of you just turning, tuning in, we are playing live the reveal to the Pentagon official that he's been recorded I'd like to do some work on the state's monopoly on violence. The state's monopoly on violence. He turns to the left. He turns to the right. We're playing for him his idea that the monopoly on violence is the concept that the state can only own firearms. So is your name really needed? And he... And uh, you really want to be on the Senate? He just starts walking out of the place. Abolishing the Senate? Gosh, there's so many things that you could do. Yeah. And you have this guy inside the department. Now then he starts walking down the stairs and he doesn't he had a cane, but he doesn't he hasn't hobbled. He has no problem running away. Let's go outside. You know, like I said, usually in these situations, they either say nothing, they run away, they assault me, or they call the police. In this case, he decides to run as fast as, as this person can run, which is walking pretty fast. Name? Aiden, is your name Jason? Aiden? Is your name Jason? Walking down the street in Washington, D.C. Uh, Aiden, is your real name Jason? And at this point in time, we're trying to establish what's with the fake name. Like, who is Aiden Gray? Who is Jason Beck? Why did he say his name was Aiden Gray? We don't know the answers at this moment in time as of a week ago or so when this was filmed. Is it Jason Beck or Aiden Gray? After we published our story, an insider within the Department of Defense provided a screenshot of the repository host of all military and civilian workforce. The insider told us that you can change your name within the system called DEERS, Defense Enrollment Eligibility Reporting System. 
You can change your name to whatever you want. So Aiden Gray appears to be the name Jason Beck changed his name to when he transitioned. So I had, um, I had bottom surgery. The plumbing is different. <laughs> Insiders within the Pentagon told us this poses a security risk because people can change their identity to whatever they want. The Insider joins us on our weekly show Wednesday on the Inside at 5 o'clock. What do you think that the Secretary of Defense is And then we continue to talk to him. I'm about to be joined. The insider has to call me on my phone, and I'm waiting. You know, here we go. Um, let's see if we can get this uh, going here. Uh, let me see if uh, I can get them on the phone. Say about all the things that you disclosed. You don't have any comments? You've been making a lot of comments to me. And I have a question for you. Do you have security clearance inside the Pentagon, inside the Department of Defense? What type of people are working in the Pentagon? This is running. He's, there's motorcycles. This is outdoor television, ladies and gentlemen. There's always dogs barking, mailmen, motorcycles. That's the problem with the kind of work we do. But he's... He, he, he's had, we've had three meetings with him, and he doesn't know who James O'Keefe is. We have three meetings with James O'Keefe, and you know who James O'Keefe is. And he's walking very stoically, very robotically. What type of security operation are they running in the department? Jason? Who is Aiden Gray? Is that your nom de plume? Is that your pseudonym? Why are you laughing? I just want to know why you lied about your name. Your name is not Jason? Well, we're here with Jason Beck, a.k.a. Aiden Gray, who's saying that he has no more comments on the streets of Washington, D.C. Part of an undercover investigation exposing the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, you also said that you wanted to confiscate... And then I remind him that he said he wants to confiscate all firearms, and this is going to be very important in a minute because we have a screenshot from inside the Department of Defense on this. All guns, ban them all, or kill the Second Amendment. Those are pretty crazy views for someone that works inside the Department of Defense. Pretty radical, I would say. The insider also provided a screenshot, a survey that comes from within DEOCS, the Defense Organizational Climate Survey. It's a culture survey done every year, and the insider tells us all employees had to enter their unique ID to access the survey. Now, this is breaking information from an insider inside the Pentagon, which I'm currently on the phone with. What a treat. I will not be able to put this person on speaker uh, because, well, for obvious reasons, but I can talk to you all with them on the phone with me. And before I get him on the phone, he's standing by. You're looking at a screenshot here uh, in inside the, the this is the um, EOCS, a culture survey that was done. Uh, and this culture survey asks people inside the Department of Defense about if they had a firearm in the living space, I would store it unloaded. And the, and, the, and the problem is many people are concerned because you're showing your real ID when you take the survey that they're tracking people with their Second Amendment views. So this is, this is new information breaking, and I'm going to put the phone up to my face and talk to this insider, and I will relay what they have to say uh, to me, to you. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hey, good. You're not on speaker, but... Um, uh, I'm going to talk to you and interview you, and, and uh, everyone can hear me, not you, so just relay your answers. So this is a screenshot. What is DEOCS? Defense Organizational Climate Survey, and when was this done? It's done yearly. Was it done most recently? And, and and the concern is what with these surveys that they're tracking people's Second Amendment views. Uh, 
Um, and, and do you know a lot of your colleagues who are concerned about this? What do you, well, what the, the concern is that they're using this information for something, but what, what do they suspect the information is being used for? Um, this Pentagon official, has there been any reaction internally to this, to your knowledge? I'm speaking with an insider within the Department of Defense who's provided screenshots inside uh, the Department of Defense in lieu of this new video that has come out. There's another internal screenshot. This is Aiden Gray, LCIV, OSD, OUSD, PR. Uh, uh, what am I looking at here? Uh, and uh, this was some type of software that people can see, everyone can access. Now we're allowing for transgenders to, so this is like, this Aiden Gray appears to be his transition name. And this is some type of, uh, of uh, uh, what is DEERS, Defense Enrollment Reporting System? Hmm. Deers, this is a screenshot off of Deers where you get your credentials. Um, uh, oh, well, I'm going to go to a couple other people that are standing by, but is there anything else you want to add to these two screenshots that have been released? Inside, I'm just going to relay what you said to the audience. Over the last few years has been a drastic change in the DOD and a conservative purge is occurring. We have a few people, actually many people have asked to be on this show to talk about what you just said. They're not current people, just to be clear, everyone. Um, there's always former people that want to talk, but to have a current person inside the Department of Defense is really, really what we, we need um, in this country. Um, the, 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 what what this person is saying over the phone is there's many like him out there. Of course, they can't lose their jobs. That's the problem. You know, you, you know, unfortunately, that's how that's how they that's how they get you with the uh, with the salary and, and all of it. And I and I understand it's it's these are the times that try men's souls. If you if you, you want to stay on the phone with me, sir, as I listen to some of the other guests that make their comments, maybe you want to add to it. Let's go to Sam. Sam, unmute your unmute yourself, please. Shoo. Hey James. Hey there. So, yeah, have you seen this clip? And and uh, I've been told that uh, uh, you have a lot to say on the subject. Well, this this particular clip, I'm not I'm not familiar with. Um, I've seen a lot of the other stuff. And uh, let me let me briefly tell you who I am, without taking up too much time. But I'm recently retired from the military. Did 21 years. Retired in August. Chief Warrant Officer. Um, and for since 2020. I've been conducting anonymous investigative reporting within the DOD. So I was one of these people that was inside the DOD reporting on ethical, moral, and criminal failures of leadership. And then a lot of the, uh, for lack of a better term, a lot of the woke stuff you're seeing right now is you're talking about the transgender stuff. But a lot of the curriculum that's, that was taking place in the academies, a lot of the stuff that was happening in ILE where majors go to train, um, <clears throat> all these different uh, DEI policies that are going on, uh, my team was responsible for a lot of the earlier, uh, I guess, exposures on this stuff. And we still do have people that are within the Department of Defense reporting on this stuff. Um, 
I would be, I would love to kind of walk you through what I've seen and uh, don't want to cut you off too much, but kind of. Yeah, let us know. I mean, in 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 two minutes or less, what what you've seen? Because we got a, a, about seven people sure. that want to. They're just like you. So just tell us the worst of it. And and again, we're talking to uh, Sam about corruption, DEI, woke behavior inside the Defense Department in light of this uh, latest revelation about Aiden Gray and some of the internal screenshots. Go ahead, sir. Two minutes or less, what you've seen. Yeah. There's so much to talk about, but let me try to run through this. So so I was somebody that didn't realize the scope of what was taking place within the military until I started doing this. And it started small. We ran a social media page where we were just creating memes, honestly. Nothing crazy, just memes, military humor. And people started messaging us, telling us stuff. As chief warrant officers, as people who had uh, placement within the community, they started telling us about what was going on. And they started sending evidence for, like I said, criminal, ethical, moral uh, violations from senior leaders and things that were taking place within their units. And we started to see how bad this was across the larger scope of the DOD as a whole. Um, one of the things I talk about often is shadow policy. And, and this is really something I've hammered home. You know, you, you have shadow governments where you have your official governments and your shadow government. Well, shadow policy is something that DOD implements where they have all of these systems in places. They had your JAG, your inspector general. Uh, you know, in, in the Army, for instance, we had SHARP, which was where you would uh, report sexual harassment and assault and stuff like that. And we saw all these programs in place, but where we were seeing the failure was at the commander's level. And, and as you go higher up the chain, you have these fiefdoms that are created, and you have these, uh, these organizations, uh, such, particularly at the 06 level and higher up in the flag officer ranks, where you have people abusing their rank, they are, they are coercing, they are retaliating, and they are really controlling the narrative within their organization. So... The, the ability to report on what was being done wasn't happening. You would have public affairs officers not to be criminal or unethical themselves, even though they were being unethical. They, th their job, though, was to protect the organization. A PAO is there to protect the organization. So what we uncovered was PAOs across the division level that were lying for their units that were, you know, you'd have spouses, service members, uh, uh, bringing things forward on social media pages, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or wherever else, and these PAOs were flat out lying to the community about what was taking place. And we had evidence otherwise that we were putting out and exposing and saying, no, you are doing this. We have the evidence of it. What you're saying is a flat out lie and exposing what they were doing. And their idea wasn't to be nefarious in some sort of, you know, global architecture. And that's important to point out. Service members in general are, are not part of some cabal that is out to do evil things. What was happening is these individuals were being incentivized through, like you said, paycheck, career, and stuff like this. And so what does a PAO do? They protect their organization. What does a JAG do? They, they provide legal resources to protect the command. What does the inspector general do? They are there to protect the command. And that's where we've seen the failures. So service members as a whole on the individual unit level are, are having crimes done to them, whether it's uh, rape, sexual harassment, or whatever else. And and they're not getting the recourse and the justice they deserve because it's being squashed at the command level because that stuff reflects on the commander. And we started to see this take place across, like I said, the DOD as a whole, this wide swath. But then outside of the unit level where we saw all these violations, this breakdown of discipline, morale, and all these other things taking place, what we were really seeing was this was a, a global architecture at the Pentagon level. So your, your secretary of defense, your branch chiefs, your secretaries and all that, that were implementing these curriculums, these, these DEI curriculums that were forcing service members at every rank, whether it was cadet all the way up through, you know, colonel, to go through and accept the fact that transgenders were in the ranks. We, we exposed things such as commanders telling a unit, he said, <laughs> this was the literal message from an 05 to his battalion, who said, if you see a woman in the shower with a penis, they are actually a woman. They, they have transi transitioned in deers. Tell your female service members, tell your female population to not be alarmed. Mind-blowing text. But we've seen this along with so many other, the Army vignettes, the official vignettes on PowerPoint that, slides that say... But, yeah, go ahead. But, but, I mean, we could do a whole show, I mean, with you. Sure, I mean, it's uh, the we problem could. is there's so much information. People get overwhelmed, and it's hard... Like, yeah, what's the most outrageous thing that you've seen? The biggest one recently 
it was the COVID mandates and the religious accommodation. The but COVID mandates, the uh, COVID mandates. COVID, yes. So, so we saw the, the subterfuge that was done with the COVID mandates and, and how, yes, there was an official policy that was legal. The Secretary of Defense said you will use an FDA-approved vaccine, but that vaccine was never provided to the service member. It was never given across the DOD at any point. The BioNTech was the only thing available, the EUA. The FDA-approved vaccine, which was named Comirnaty, also named or also provided by Pfizer, was never produced. We have countless documents at this point to prove that Pfizer never produced it. It was never given by the DOD, yet they coerced and ended the careers of thousands of service members under the subterfuge of taking a legal vaccine. But it wasn't lawful how it was implemented. And then you had the religious accommodations that were that were not only denied, but they were blanket denied. And under the constitutional law that this, uh, you know, points to how this is supposed to be implemented, you have to individually review every religious accommodation that came through. Well, we saw blanket rubber stamped accommodations that went through and, and denied everybody across the DOD. We wrote articles. What is the status of all those people that took the, the mandatory thing and got fired? What, what's happening with that now? Well, uh, most of them have refused to come back in. You know, the DOD opened it back up for people to rejoin. And it's not rejoining the position. It means to come back through and go through the whole process again to come back in the military. So it wasn't just, hey, come back, back in and we'll take you as is. Well, these people were, were harmed by the DOD in countless ways, and they don't trust the system anymore. They don't want to come back to this organization that lied to them, that, that, uh, that abused them in this regard. And so you've only had literally a, a few dozen that have actually come back into the DOD to rejoin the ranks. Um, outside of that, they they harmed people through the DD-214s they gave them, so their, their discharge status, they were harmed through that, even though they can technically upgrade it. It's taken years to upgrade their discharge status, and this was all all done under the guise, like I said, of a lawful vaccine mandate, which was not lawful in any regard. And, and it has absolutely set our military back. You see what's happening with recruiting. It has set our military back decades as far as trust and, and what we are able to provide. Well, well bringing it back to this, this bringing it back to this story that we're doing about Aiden Gray, who gets to change his name on the, on the uh, software that you guys use, um, I guess anybody can change their name to anything they want. That seems like a national security issue. I'm not familiar with that as, as to whether you can just jump in there and do that. However, I do know that the military recognizes you officially as the sex you are in Deers. So if you're a man, you were born a man, and whether you have had a sex change or not, you can have, you've had to go through, through a legal process. I'm not just saying you can flip it on the spot. If, if you've gone through the process, even if you still have a penis, you can change your official sex in gears to female. And one of the things we reported on recently was a, a Marine, a, a, a young junior enlisted Marine in Hawaii that was forced to watch a urinalysis for a transgender a man who was pretending to be a woman, was forced to watch the urinalysis of this major in Hawaii. And what they did is they brought in three other junior enlisted Marines and they said, would this bother you? Well, they, they were scared and they said, no. So anyway, since this person was a female on paper, this other female had to watch as they peed into a cup because that was their sex in deer. We have evidence and proof of this. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, and what did you do? What, what, I, and you're not currently, but what was your position? I was an intelligence officer. Intelligence officer. Um, Thank you, uh, and perhaps stand by as we go to our next guest. Um, uh, we have uh, a Br Brad. Are you there? I am. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Brad, you're a former. Um, you resigned your commission over the mandates because of lack of trust in the DoD chain of command. Um, have you seen this? This your former battalion commander? Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, I was a. Uh... So I was a battalion commander in the 101st Airborne when the mandate came out. I was relieved of command for refusing to go along with the mandate. I subsequently resigned altogether from the Army when I saw that the military was not going to walk this back. So I ended up leaving the military with uh, just over 19 years of active service. Once I realized that I could no longer reconcile continued service in an infiltrated military with my own oath to the Constitution, which I have always taken very seriously. Um, 
And have you seen this video of Aiden Gray or any of his comments? Yeah, I, I, I have. I have seen the video. Um, so I, I think I think there are a lot of problems here. I think when people look at what's going on in the Department of Defense, I think a lot of Americans who may not be service members themselves may not even necessarily have family members that are in the military. But even so, a lot of Americans are realizing that there are significant problems within our Department of Defense right now. And people are realizing that they can no longer trust the Department of Defense to, one, fulfill the oath that its members take to the Constitution, and two, to, uh, to really defend the homeland and to defend what it means to be an American. And I would say that there are some very specific things that we have seen over the last couple of years, whether it's the, um, the COVID shot mandate that Sam just spoke to, whether it is the uh, botch withdrawal from Afghanistan that happened at roughly the same time as the, uh, as the mandate went through, whether it's the DEI stuff that Sam also just spoke to. But just these couple of things have all seemed to happen just in the last couple of years. And I will tell you that American trust in the military is in free fall. That's why we're having so many problems with retention and recruitment. And yes, this is a national security issue. And I'll take it one step further and then I'll pause. And that is there's a concept out there that I think is very important, but a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with. And that's the concept of moral injury, because moral injury in some ways can be invisible. But I put a um, I put a couple of things down in the, uh, the chat below that people can check out. Um, and one of them is just something that I wrote a couple of thoughts of mine on what moral injury is. But I would say that the military and a greater military community to include service members, families, and all Americans to some degree have been morally injured by what the military has done. And what that means is they've lost trust. They feel this disjuncture cognitively between what they want to believe about their military, but then what they see their military doing. And that is a real phenomenon. And that's one of the reasons why there's going to continue to be this ever-growing divide between society at large, the citizenry, and the military until some of these things can be fixed. Well, um, we're, we're, we're talking to a former battalion commander in the uh, military about what's happening inside the Department of Defense. I also have the insider still on the phone. I can't say who this person is, but he's currently on the inside. Sir, your reaction to what Sam and Brad have just said and, and your thoughts because you're still on the inside. I'm just going to, because they can't hear you, so I'm just telling the audience, I'm listening to what he's saying. He's talking about going to a military doctor. Continue. Um... You simply need to get a doctor's note. There's no legal requirement. Um, wow. Um, and again, to change your sex. And do you know if they're using government money to, to change the sex? They'll put you up on bed rest for months at a time while your unit may be deploying. So this this transgender issue. And a question for you, Mr. Insider. This show is called On the Inside. Does Aiden Gray, a.k.a. Jason Beck, or like Prince, formerly known as a symbol or vice versa, whatever the circ circumstance, I guess it's Jason Beck. Aiden Gray, formerly known as James, Jason Beck. Um, does he or she... Um, get a promotion or get escorted out of the Pentagon? Gets a promotion. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to uh, 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 Brad. Does, does this Aiden Gray character get a promotion or get fired for his views that he wants to mobilize the National Guard to confiscate guns and, and he wants open border policies? 
Well, I mean, I can tell you what what should happen now is that what's going to happen those you know those may be two completely different things unfortunately we have seen our military which should remain nonpartisan, but we have seen them adopt very partisan beliefs and then if service members in their own personal capacity have other partisan beliefs in their own personal private capacity we have seen them actually get in trouble for that so um again we're at this point where we can no longer necessarily trust our military to remain grounded in the constitution and laws without necessarily you know slipping into political favoritism or uh or uh or partisanship in one direction or another one thing that i just wanted to say really quickly is you know i'm part of a, of a movement that is pushing for military accountability and there's some documents that i dropped in the chat below one is a declaration of military accountability that a small group of us pushed out on uh, on January 1st on New Year's Day. There's a post that's been seen a couple million times that we pushed out early in the morning on New Year's Day. People can find that below, as well as an associated website that is simply militaryaccountability.com. Because what we as service members or former service members need in terms of support from the public is we've got to get more individuals to realize, one, just how screwed up the, de the Department of Defense is right now, and then two, understand just how grave a situation this is right now and that if we really care about the uh, the future of our country and i know people listening do then we have got to fix what's going on in one of our most important government agencies thank you and uh let's go to um sam i want to ask you that same question are you still there sam i am uh, does does he get promoted or fired aiden gray well we've seen a number of instances so i, I he, he's not going to get either but I'll tell you what will happen based on past uh, past examples. So these people that are outspoken, uh, progressive in their views, liberal in their views, they are generally ignored on social media. They're given a pass. Um, the media will run cover for the higher ranking ones that do this stuff. And there have been a number of very high ranking people who have who have spoken out in this regard. Um, and then the the lower the lower ranking people will just kind of get ignored. And nothing will happen if you are. The, the military purportedly is nonpartisan. They are nonpolitical. However, we've seen too much of that in the last few years. It is, it is very much oriented to the left. And if you run counter to that message and you are public about it, the military will use those social media and those, those policies that, that are put in place to keep people from using the uniform as a platform to, to come after you and end your career. Let's, so let's answer uh, your question again. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was going to say, to answer your question again, this person won't be promoted, but they definitely will not be penalized for what they did. What will not be penalized? That's remarkable. Let's call Aiden Gray for comment right now again. Uh, yeah, he's got a new... The wireless customer you are calling is... He must have disconnected his phone because this was his phone number as of a couple days ago. We'll never hear from Aiden Gray ever again. He's disappeared off the face of the planet. Well, uh, I want to thank you all for joining. Uh, if you have tips, you can go to uh, tips.okeefemediagroup.com, tips.okeefemediagroup.com. Our signal number is in the bio uh, of, our, of, our, of our X page there, so you can send us an encrypted signal. I'm currently, as I'm on live on the air, I'm multitasking. I'm like an octopus. I'm doing eight things at the same time. You know, I've got the phone up to my face with the insider inside the Department of Defense. i got two former military guys on the air, and I'm talking to a Border Patrol agent as we're shipping hidden cameras out to them and, and uh, people all across the United States. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have to go to lightning round, everyone. Um, uh, we're going to have to go to lightning round, which is my favorite round because I teach you how to communicate in 30 seconds or less. I really love the first part of the show when we talked to the Pima County Sergeant. You never know what's going to happen when you call people. I encourage you to call them for comment, do your own FOIA requests. And now we're going after the Department of Defense. When I say going after, I mean exposing. Uh, so we've gone after the IRS, uh, the Department of Defense, BlackRock, Pfizer, <laughs> um, the cartel, NGOs, churches, and they say that I'm controlled opposition. I don't know how that works. Nothing screams controlled opposition like doing all that stuff, but also being arrested by the FBI, raided by the FBI, sued 40 times, 
and fired from the company I founded. Whew, maybe people say I'm controlled opposition because it makes them feel better about the fact that they don't do, do anything. I don't know. But that's a psychological question. Um, let's go to lightning round. But in terms of the Department of Defense and in terms of monitoring and surveillance, I use Signal. Uh, but I'm also starting to use this phone, this unplugged phone. This is, this is an amazing device. Hasn't even come out yet. You can pre-order it. Unplugged. It looks like an iPhone. It's got the Libertas operating system. Um, I know a lot about electronic security. I, I have a lot of you reach out to me to help me with electro. I, I, first of all, I didn't know anything about electronic security. Uh, and I face threats every day, cybersecurity threats every single day. And one of those things I know for sure is that with the smartphone you are likely currently using, um, we are being listened to and tracked 24 seven. There's a little ad ID on your phone. They take the phone, they harvest your personal private information for the benefit of big tech and big government. And that's what happens. Now, my friend, Eric Prince, who's actually mentioned in this story, <laughs> crazy enough, uh, they called him a villain. They said he's the worst person in the world. He also said, I'm the worst person in the world. So I share that in common with Eric Prince. He's a retired Navy SEAL, founded Blackwater. He's developed this new phone, this unplugged phone, which I actually use. I have a, I have a phone, it's, I use it to send messages on their app. Unplugged is built with a totally independent operating system that is absolutely secure. No tracking us on apps. Every call and text is end-to-end -end encrypted. They can't listen in or follow our online activity. And if we're ever under threat, we can enter a code. Our data is totally wiped. I love it also has the, the camera there, the speed, the stores, the chipset that rival the iPhone and Android. I have to protect my privacy. I have to protect my sources. Remember when the FBI raided me? Why did the FBI raid me? Well, for many reasons, but one was to get access to my phone so they could get access to my sources. And if you're a citizen journalist like me, you want to protect your privacy. If you're anyone, you want to protect your privacy. So I'm switching to the new unplugged phone. Get your own unplugged phone. That's unplugged.com slash OMG. That's unplugged.com slash OMG. Take your privacy back. Here's the box. They're doing pre-orders. They ship out in May. That's unplugged.com slash OMG. They also have a, a messaging app. And here we go with my unplugged phone. I'm messaging the Border Patrol agent. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm getting requests to wear hidden cameras. So I'm messaging, I'm messaging the insiders with my unplugged phone and my unplugged app. That's unplugged.com slash OMG. All right, here we go. Lightning round. We're late. Here we go. Anything can happen. But, but uh, Tara, you're a regular every week. Tara wrote us, HHS whistleblower. Tara, how you doing? Hey, James. I'm doing great. It's always great to be in your spaces, and thank you so much for the amazing journalism that you're doing, bringing transparency and accountability. And thanks so much to Sam and Brad for their service. But this story is absolutely shocking that we have people within the DOD who want to use the National Guard to come confiscate your guns. I That's mean, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy, and uh, the reveal, mm -hmm. I hope you like the reveal uh, yeah. uh, where I'm showing him the Netflix show of him watching himself in the kind of Black Mirror style from Netflix there. Hey, Tara, um, uh, speaking of which, I re I rewatched the, um, the movie uh, Sound of Freedom this week, yeah. and it was heavy on my heart, and... We're going to be doing a lot of work exposing this child trafficking issue on the border um, without giving away too much information. Uh, that's, that's a big priority of mine. Uh, I want to get inside these facilities. I want to expose what's happening this year. I think it's one of the biggest issues of the year. Um, any advice and counsel on that? Uh, we've had a couple people DM us, Tara. I can't say their names. You may know them. You may not know them. These are lots of NGOs throughout the Southwest United States. Any advice and guidance uh, for citizen journalists that want to expose that and work team up with OMG? Yes. So if you're out there, you should be trying to get into the airports to film the handoffs of the children to these supposed sponsors who we know are criminals. They're transnational criminal organizations. There are it's it's shocking. And so children are gone and criminals are getting them. And so if people can 
actually videotape those those handoffs and they are occurring in baggage claim at airports baggage so, claim baggage claim and yes and if anyone and, and tara like so how do we go about uncovering that it, it, it happens in baggage claim at airports um the children talk walk us through that process briefly so what's going to happen is children are going to be getting off of a plane with an escort, uh, which your tax dollars are paying for. And the story that dropped yesterday was it was $404 million this year just in flights. So that's pretty interesting. Hmm. Um, so the children will have an escort with them, and the child will typically be wearing a backpack. Typically, the kids are dressed mm -hmm. the same. And they have a manila envelope with all of their documents in it. So you can identify them. They typically, here's the thing, you're going to need to be a night owl because they like to do these delivery of children in baggage claim in the evenings. So they like to do it at night under the cover of darkness. People probably remember in 2021 you know, there were the rumors of flights all over the country and where were they going and who were on the planes? Well, it was children. You know, we brought over 400,000 in, and they admit to losing 85,000. So there's a lot of missing children, and the only way we're going to recover them is for people to get out there and show the handoff to these, to these bad actors. Well, Tara, I'll be working with you offline on how to expose that, and thank you for what you do and for helping me and your introductions you've made, and I appreciate your comments. Tara, thank you again. Uh, and if you I have, guys... You. If you have information, you know, the biggest thing we need is informants. We have so many at OMG already. Uh, I, I can tell you that I've met with uh, Deep Throat, so to speak, inside a number of these NGOs, and they've got access to a lot of documents, and I'm very excited to expose all of it. Let's go to Tim Jordan. Are you there? I am. Thank you, James. I appreciate everything you're doing. My question, and I'll keep it brief, uh, to the two service members that are up there that I heard speak, uh, Brad, and I believe the other was Sam. I believe there's probably going to be a lot of military uh, enlisted men now that are listening to this space that may be listening now or listen to the recording. What would you say to those members that are in? Because we know the members themselves are not corrupt, the majority, and what can they do to stand up to this at their at their level what can they do to push back against this and not that neither one of you did not push back but what would you say to those that's a great question back? that's a great question tim uh brad and uh, sam uh, uh well why don't we have brad go first and then sam sure okay thanks great question um so first and foremost, what I would say is regardless of the position or the rank that you hold, you can always make the decision to do the right thing. And you can make the decision now that under no circumstances will you ever obey an unlawful order, that that is a red line that you will not cross. And that way, if a young service member finds themselves in a position where everyone else seems to be doing the wrong thing, they have already made the decision ahead of time that no matter what, that is a red line they will not cross, that they will continue to put their sense of duty ahead of even their own career and that's a uh, that's a principle that people can follow whether they are 18 years old or whether they already have 18 years of service in the military so thanks again for the question uh i'll echo much sam go ahead yeah i'll echo what brad said in, in large part what i'll say to that is we've lost our way in this country when it comes to civics and, and just getting into the books that we have and reading so for service members out there, if you if you see something that looks legal, but you hear, you see a lot of people kick up dust about it, and they're saying, this is unlawful, this is wrong, you need to ask why. Instead of putting your horse blinders on, sticking your fingers in your ears, and, and tuning them out, you need to read for yourself and say, why are they saying this is unlawful? We had too many commanders, too many service leaders, or service members at every rank that turned a blind eye to this and refused to get into the books and read, and, it, and it's, a, it's a larger problem in this country, but... Don't follow unlawful orders and make sure you're reading and figuring out what is being told to you. Thanks, guys. Great question. I, I, my own answer is, you know, if you're, I posted this video last night, late last night. I hope you all see it. Uh, if your price is not your life, then you are for sale. And if you want to be a truth teller, your price has to be your life. If you don't, don't call yourself a truth teller unless you're willing to lay down your life. 
So if you want to do this type of work, it gets real spiritual real fast. Like we go from zero to 60 miles an hour in a New York minute. Um, uh, it goes, it goes, well, actually zero to a thousand miles an hour in New York minute. It gets spiritual real fast. And it's not for the faint of heart. And we, these are the times that try men's souls. I've got 10 minutes and I'm going to try to get to like 15 of you. But this means I need you to speak in 30 seconds or less. Let's go to Drew. Outstanding. Go ahead, sir. Hey, James. Uh, thanks. I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. Uh, I was serving in 2021 in the Army National Guard. Had to get both. Or had to get Pfizer shot. Ended up with uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, paralyzed coma, six months in the in the hospital. And then the, the thing that that's a whole nother story by itself. The thing that really put me off is they lied about how I received it. In my VA record, I found this out later that they called it that I got it from the flu vaccine or the flu. And at that time, I had never had the flu shot. I never had uh, the flu influenza, but they blamed it on the flu. And I was so nervous to go into my, the VA and tell them to change it. But I got the courage and said, hey, this is wrong. I got it from the COVID-19 vaccine. You need to change this. And eventually I looked online and it popped up and they said I got anaphylaxis uh, from the COVID-19 vaccine. So finally, like, you got to fight this stuff and you got to download your records and, and fight against these things or it won't happen. You got to be your own advocate. I've gone through hell in the past three years. James, I met you a couple times at AmFest. You've been incredible on your Pfizer because it was Pfizer. It was the VA mandate or the Army mandate. So I, I just encourage anybody out there, you, you've got to fight for yourself. you got to advocate. you got to connect with these amazing people on this space. And just keep doing what you're doing, James, and everybody else here. Brad's been awesome. So, yeah, thanks for hearing me out. Thank, thank you, Drew. That was that was really touching message, and I appreciate that. And it was nice to see you at AmFest. Let's go to Eric. Eric Coyle, go ahead. you got 30 seconds. Yeah, um, uh, so I was uh, enlisted on Fort Carson. Um, had a great time as when I was enlisted but i took a civilian job it was with mwr morale welfare recreation on every base i was working in their marketing department i was getting asked to uh sign off or request funds sounds like it i've talked to a lot of lawyers i've dropped a lot of freedom of information at requests i posted a few um it's embezzlement i've gotten this pushed up to congressmen including congressman doug lamborn um acostia cortez doesn't matter which party two senators in colorado hickenlooper and bennett they all literally stonewall me at this point check out militarycorruption.com um I had posted a link to the article and my phone numbers there if anybody wants to call me. I've been trying to get the word out, but they're definitely trying to frame uh, whether it's active duty or civilian for embezzlement. I know where the money's going. I know who the people are. Um, no lawyer wants the case. Very fascinating. It seems all right. like uh, in all areas of society, things are the center cannot hold. Things are falling apart. People no longer are loyal to the organization because the organization is betrayed the mission of the organization, and uh, there's a lot of people here that want to talk. There's a lot of people that want to want to want to feel like their voice is heard in this country, and uh, what it's going to require is people on the inside speaking up. And it sounds like a lot of you guys are doing that. It's very inspiring. Let's go to stop watching TV. Go ahead, you're live. Hi, James. Uh, I just want to. Uh Hey, man, I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, and uh, I want to remind you that you are a strong voice in the land. And uh, we definitely appreciate everything that you're doing and uh, that you provide an action-oriented show instead of just random noise, which is 99% of what conservatives talk about or the political discourse out there. Um, so I had a question, actually. Is it legal to record a phone call with a public official acting in an official capacity without informing them, or is it somehow... That's a great question, and this should, be, this should be a subject of another O'Keefe Academy Masterclass, but just to give you a little hint, hint, um, it's always legal if you get their consent. And uh, uh, go ahead and uh, mute yourself, the other guy that's still on. Uh, but it's always legal if you get consent. Consent is an exception to the Fourth Amendment for searches and seizures. It's also an exception to the recording laws. So if I, if someone says, you may record me, I can record. And you know those little things they always say on the phone with you when they say, this call is recorded for quality and assurance purposes? <laughs> you could always yeah. say that. 
But in 38 states, it's legal to record. I'm, I'm in New Jersey right now. I made the call to Arizona. That's a one-party consent state. And uh, my team can go ahead and post that graphic in the nest. Go ahead, post that graphic team to show the people which states it's legal to record in. So you're you're fine if you're if you're calling a one-party consent state, sir. What state are you calling from today? California. No, oh, that's that's a problem. It's always the yeah. California thing. Literally, you people are everywhere. It's like a virus. <laughs> like, like. Actually, uh, you and I uh, met up on uh, last Saturday. That's right. That's we had this conversation last Saturday. Yeah, yeah we talked about that. So it's like it's just a California thing, and, and I think you said you're moving out of California. You cannot record a phone call in California unless you get permission from the person that you're that you're recording, or you inform yeah. them that you're recording. What a curse! So you could say, yeah, "I am recording you. This call is being recorded." That would probably qualify as as consent because now the other person has a right to. To, to hang up or continue to talk to you, okay? Okay, all right, great. Yeah, I have other questions, but probably I'll just give up the floor at this point. All right, well, we'll talk offline, and nice to meet you. Let's go to AJ. Oh, you're, you're live, you're excited, your hand's raising and waving. Go ahead. Thank you, Jake. You're awesome. I appreciate what you do, Steve. Uh, your videos. Um, I love that you keep mentioning the phrase truth teller. I just uh, wrote and published a song called Truth Teller, believe it or not. Um, so my question is, I see you, obviously, you're catching a lot of people uh, in their lies, and you're gathering a lot of evidence. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you were, somebody was committing, like, a, a, a verifiable crime where you could, like, enact a citizen's arrest? Or have you ever considered, like, well, we got the footage, they're breaking the law. Have you ever considered, like, conducting citizen's arrests in uh, what you're doing? Um. That's a good question. I've been arrested. I've had people do citizen's arrests on me. Uh, not really because I feel like that's not the role of a, of a journalist. The role of a journalist is to inform the public. And perhaps sometimes you need to inform your member of Congress or inform law enforcement, but not necessarily to uh, be law enforcement. I just think it's a different role. It's a different function. I'm too busy. And I'm on to the next thing, right? So I don't, I don't think I've ever, I don't, I've ever been in a situation where that called for it. But I, I, I guess there is a situation I can envision. But it hasn't happened in 20 years of doing this type of work. Most of the time, I'm trying to avoid being arrested. Uh, the Pentagon official here, Aiden Gray, I was always concerned that he's going to call the police. I'm in D.C. It's a hostile jurisdiction. He's going to make something up. Let's go to Mandy. Uh, go ahead. You're live. Mandy, going once, going twice. Hi. Oh, there you are. Okay, just in time. Hi, I'm here. I'm here. I'm a little off subject, but I am in the great state of California, too. Um, All these Texas. Californians. Well, go <laughs> go west, I young man. I mean, yeah, it's like... We're such a conser this county is more conservative than a lot of counties in red states. Well, so the I'm problem is that. not your county. So, it's your attorney general. It's your governor. Okay. They I have... They, they're the so one... I mean, on that subject... On that subject, James, I um, did a little investigation of my own, and I went after a, a group called Sierra Harm Reduction, and they passed out uh, crack pipes, needles, syringes um, to addicts in our county. And so what I did was I went, uh, made a phone call, and met the guy down the street from my house, and I got a bag of crack pipes and meth pipes and all kinds of goodies, and I took them to our local Board of Supervisors meeting, and I not only spoke about how easy it was to get these, is I um, submitted it for the public record. Well, today I found out that the governor, because our supervisors didn't know and realize what this Sierra harm reduction was doing, and they were getting federal and state funding to, to enable addicts. So um, today I found out that the governor, Newsom, is actually suing our county um, because we uh, don't we are not buying into the needle exchange program. So it's kind of my fault that our county is being sued right now by Newsom. And I'm very proud of that. Well, good work. I hope that our DA stands up to them and we take this a lot further because they are, what they are doing in San Francisco is trickling down the two hours down the hill towards us. 
I mean, I mean, I don't know what. Why are you still in California? Is is my question. I got my toes. Because you keep saying how can all you Californians keep telling me how conservative your counties are, and then in the very next sentence, you tell me how horrible your state is. So I'm trying to understand the logic here. Well, I this is the thing. It's like I I I've seen I have seen so many Californians go to Idaho where they're still fighting the transgender mm -hmm. uh, mafia agenda. And I feel like we've kind of already been through that, so they don't really bother us here. I Whereas see. a lot of red states are dealing with it head on right now. That's a fair point. We've already established ourselves as a conservative county, and people know that. Well, right? I, I mean, I, 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 I did not want to, you know, did not want to leave the New York City metropolitan area, but I think this Trump... Judge Engeron ruling against Trump for four hundred million was a shot across the bow. That was, that it was is. third world stuff. So it, 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 it and and I and I'm I'm all for you know you know defending the Alamo. I mean, I I, I never wanted to leave my home and and I've been here for my whole life. It's just gotten yeah. to the point where it's a matter of literally life or death. And I I, I admire I what you do. Uh, the school board buying drugs. How would you? How did you do that without breaking the law? I didn't buy drugs. Oh. I got needles. I got free. You needles. got. I got free needles. I misheard you. Harm reduction. And so okay. because I brought that to our our uh, board of supervisors, our county board of supervisors, they had no idea this was going on. And so now they don't want it in the county. The sheriff. Everybody has said they don't want it. The DA doesn't want it. And now Newsom is suing our county as of yesterday, the county of El Dorado. And it was the work that I did to bring attention to it. And I'm very proud of that. And it's because of people like you that made me stand up. We need more and people like proud. you to go do this in school board meetings and county yes. meetings. Go ahead. And I'm also proud to be, I was um, uh, named more extreme than the Tea Party by Sacramento Bee. And I... I'm very proud of that label as well. Well, we like we like being being hated. We said we don't like being hated, but being hated is something we have to learn to accept. And it's people who care about their reputation so much that are the problem. Thank you, Mandy. It was really nice yes, talking I hold to you. Head high, James. I hold my head high wherever I go. Hold your Thank head you. high and don't let the bastards get you down. You know, you the question it. now is how many of the people I'm about to call on are from California? <laughs> Did you know? That literally 80% of the people that that apply to work for me are from California. I don't know what it is out there. I guess people are just of a more artistic and avant-garde nature. Let, let's go to Nikwa. Oh, you're for, you're not from California. You're from New Hampshire. Uh, hey, James. Uh, hey, huge fan and appreciate the, uh, the work you've done in Project Veritas. And I just wanted to respond to someone talking about military recruitment. I was active duty army right out of high school and the army turned me into an anarcho-capitalist but even after i got out uh i still recommended like 18 year olds not sure what what they were doing i was like hey you know what do this because it's not a bad deal and as much as it's stupid like whatever uh just do it and i actually have stopped doing that because luckily i got out before they mandated these vaccines because i didn't want these vaccines but the, the military has this crazy way of ruining your life if, you know, if you stand up for yourself in these situations. And this, like, this is something straight out of a, a movie where it's like you have this weird Frankenstein mRNA, you know, you know the whole thing, uh, being forced. Uh, otherwise, you, you get this black mark on your life, some sort of dishonorable discharge or something. I mean, that's really bad. Um, so because after I saw that evil, I, I can't even where I already should be in a position to not tell people to join the military, I was still telling people to do it, and that was really what ended it for me. And the second thing is, I don't know if anybody knows, I live in New Hampshire, I moved here from Texas, so New Hampshire is the freest state in the country, we got this thing called the Free State Project, and it's awesome. And free state in the nation, uh, you're not Florida, it's not Texas, those places are cool, they're cool, but it's, you're killing, we're killing it up here. We got, we got libertarians moving up here up the wazoo. So move to New Hampshire if you love liberty. If you hate liberty, don't move to New Hampshire. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your comments. Uh, we got a few more minutes. Let's go till 6.40 Eastern time. We were 40 minutes late today. Let's go to um, who's speaking? Uh, this is Jess from Lover's Way. I, I got a question, James. 
Um, I love what you've done. I love all your work. Um, I interviewed one of your whistleblowers, and he said that you went to Bohovian Grove. Well, uh, yeah. What, what, what's your question? All right. I, I don't know what happened there. Let's go to Christina Moros. You're live. Go ahead. Hi, James. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, I'm with the FLCCC, uh, Pierre Corey's organization, and I just wanted to make sure that all of our listeners are aware, especially our military listeners, that there is treatment for vaccine injury. And my buddies, Brad Miller and Drew Outstanding, are going to be on a Twitter space with me next Tuesday, March 26th from 7 to 8.30 Central Standard Time, which is going to be our second Twitter space on uh, the military and the vaccine mandates. So I just wanted to, uh, everyone to know about that. And if they're interested, they can join us. Thank you for that. Uh, a couple more. Let's go to um, some people I've never spoken to before because there's been people on this program every week. Um, let's see. How about... Uh, KB Trader, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, James. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, with Mike Gill or the Amazing Polly, but they raised some questions about uh, this latest video with the, the guy with the plumbing in the Department of Defense. And uh, they pointed out that your biggest sponsor seems to be Eric Prince. And you were going after a guy who um, apparently was was blocking Eric Prince's contracts, getting government contracts. Does that strike you as a conflict of interest? And can you address that? And can you explain, like, how, how, how we, um, you know, you, you, one thing you, you always said is that, you, you know, journalism, if it's corporate and sponsors, then you can't trust it because they're going to, you know, they're brought to you by Pfizer and they're going to protect Pfizer or whatever. Are, are you, I mean, do you have that problem now if you've got sponsors like uh, like Eric Prince? Well, I mean, no sponsor has ever told me what to do or what not to do. And as someone who's been doing this for 20 years, we had 100,000 individual sponsors. And many of those people run ran or run publicly traded companies. So never in my life have has anyone told me what to do, and I've received money from everywhere. I, I would take money from Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or Donald Trump. In fact, Trump wrote me a check in 2015. Um, all types of people have written me checks. The Supreme Court uh, had a case, the NAACP decision from 1954, that protected the right of organizations to receive money and keep those people anonymous. I think that the right to keep a source of funding anonymous, let's say if you're a journalist, is closely linked to your right to keep sources anonymous. But if you're asking me, implied in your question is, do I let the sources of funding dictate my editorial agenda? The answer is no. So is it a coincidence then? Or, I mean, you know, it, it, it's just kind of remarkable. You specifically asked him about Eric Prince and why he was blocking. Congress. It actually truly was a coincidence. <laughs> it was serendipitous. So Someone say... This guy who happened to be one guy blocking Eric Prince from getting contracts. That's not and factually correct uh, because I mean, this... He's probably not the only guy. There's probably somebody else too. Well, you said he's happened. the one guy blocking Prince. From, Prince Prince no longer is the leader of Blackwater. He's... Well, I didn't say that. You said that. He said that on the video. That's what... That's what he... He said Eric Prince founded Blackwater on the video. What you just said, and this is being taped, is that you said something different than that. You said he's the one guy blocking Prince's contracts. That's not factually correct. Okay, I mean, not literally the one guy. You get the point, though. Um, uh, he, he works on the policy boundaries regarding certain government contracts and the rules and regulations for them, and he has a philosophical dispute with whether there should be private contractors. He thinks that this is Aiden Gray, thinks the government... Should, should run everything, that big government's a good thing. Those are his words. Those are the things that he said. And as an investigative reporter, I will always take issue with someone who says big government is a good thing, right? It's sort of like the whole idea of transparency. It's sort of like 
inherent in my values. So I kind of take a stance on someone who believes that, you know, as a matter of course. But it actually was a coincidence that he brought up Prince. It was a complete and total coincidence, and, and, I, and I highlighted that, uh, and, I, and I actually interviewed Prince, and we'll be putting out that interview here soon. Regarding the, the anonymous donors, though, like if you go to a place like Bohemian Grove, do you see why that raises questions to people about, uh, you know, op- you know, if, if for those of us who are fans of Alec Jones, that, that's not a group that, that anybody should be associating with. Um, is he is he lying? Is he wrong about them? What, what's uh, well, I've I've had a hundred thousand people give me money over the last twenty years. Um, yeah, I'm sure some are bigger than others, though. Uh, sure, I've had and I won't and I won't release their names. I have a constitutional First Amendment right not to do so. And, and I would go all the way to the Supreme Court, and if the Supreme Court asked me to release my donor names, I would, I would tell the judge that I'm, I'm how happy to be held in contempt of court and not release those names. But we know who Fox, Fox News' donors are because they're transparent about it. So aren't they being more transparent? Fox News doesn't have donors. They're a for-profit company. Uh, you know so they mean? don't. Their donors are their are their advertisers. Well, there's a pattern of behavior. We keep saying, "Do I know what you mean?" And I and I and I don't know what you mean because I'm trying to understand your point. My point is, is that we know who's funding Fox News. It's their advertisers. Uh, mostly, yes, yes, but they're but they're not. But advertisers are not donors. Um, and well, we don't know who's funding you, and so that you know, there's a lot of uh, mystery. Well, there. you've never known who's it funding right, me, but, but that doesn't. But that doesn't. But that doesn't change the sanctity or the integrity of the journalism. Jur- journalism is, it is, is true, and I can assure you that nobody has ever told me what to do, and no one has ever told me what not to do. And if anybody ever were tell me what not to do or what to do, I would probably covertly film that person, which is precisely why they don't tell me what to do. There was one meeting I had where, where a donor tried to hint that I should do something, and he quickly changed changed his uh, tact when, when he got careful and scared because he thought I was going to record him. I've taken money from hundreds of thousands of people, and, uh, uh, and the right, the, the freedom of association under the First Amendment not to disclose uh, an a, a individual that funds you is protected by the United States Supreme Court, as is the right not to protect the source. And I appreciate your you're, you're, you're challenging me, and I, and I have answered you, asked and answered, and anything else I would say would be to repeat myself. Thank you. Um, let's go to one more question. Uh, let's go to, uh, go, and let's see who to speak on. Jason. Jason Watkins, are you there? No, Jason's got on mute, probably stepped away from the computer. And um, let's go to, uh, who else do we have here? One more person. Federal. Are you, James? Are you there? Can you hear me? I am here. This is Jason. Yeah, we're going to close out the show. Um, next steps on the FOIA request, sir. I'm going to keep requesting them. I think uh, I have a, a standing appointment with the Attorney General's office. There's an ombudsman in the state of Arizona who looks into issues like this and follows up. Uh, <clears throat> if something tells me that that uh, they're going to take some corrective action as far as their website. So I'll keep an eye on that and uh, let you know if they make any changes on their website to make it easier to request documents. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to stand by my, my email inbox and just wait for these videos to come in. Hopefully we get them. Well, you heard it live, everyone. Jason Watkins doing the FOIA request on the Pima County Sheriff's Office footage, which we hopefully will get, and modifications possibly to the website uh, so that we get the information. And uh, we appreciate you, Jason, doing that. We appreciate you all joining us. We appreciate the Department of Defense officials. And uh, that's another episode of On the Inside with James O'Keefe, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, sometimes 4.30 to 6.30 Eastern time every week, each week on Facebook, Rumble, Instagram, Spaces, Telegram, Carrier Pigeon, Uh, We're doing things nobody has ever done. We're getting footage we haven't released. We're sending out hidden cameras. And if you want to support us, O'KeefeMediaGroup.com, tips.O'KeefeMediaGroup.com. Our signal message is on fire right now. People messaging me on signal. And you have this this phone, this up phone 
which is they can't spy on you. You got the wellness company here, the code that you can go buy the product, support us, support the people who support us and make our journalism possible. And tune in next week. If you're lying, cheating, stealing, or scamming, you may be the next unwilling internet celebrity. Who knows where we're going to be 